Want to speak real Dutch from your first lesson? Sign up for your free lifetime account at DutchPod101.com. Kijk, het regent. Zie je Pieters auto daar? Het raam staat nog open. Oh, oh, de stoel is al nat. Ik roep Pieter meteen. Nee, Pieter is niet thuis. Hij werkt vandaag. Op zondag? Ja, Pieter werkt in de winkel van zijn oom, in het centrum. Die winkel is open op zondag. Ik heb zin in koffie met iets lekkers. Hebben ze hier lekkere koffie? Ja, de koffie is erg goed. Oké, ik neem ook koffie. Hebben Bert en jij kinderen? Wij hebben twee kinderen. En jij? Heb jij kinderen? Ja, wij hebben ook twee kinderen. Je hebt een druk leven. Jan heeft een druk leven. Ik heb een goed leven. Hello and welcome to this next Dutch lesson where we will talk about the must-know phrases in Dutch. My name is Stella and I will be teaching you some very useful basic phrases in Dutch today. So let's get started. The first word of the day is hallo. Hello. Hallo. Hello. So as you can see, the standard Dutch greeting is very similar to the English one. Um, now, if you feel like mixing it up a little bit, you can also say hoi. Uh, which is our version of hey, and it's slightly more informal. Now, if you want to be a little less casual, for example, if you arrive at work in the morning, um, you could say this. Goedemorgen. Good morning. Goedemorgen. Goedemorgen. Now, if you want to be a little less casual, for example, if you arrive at work in the morning, you could say this. Goedemorgen. Goedemorgen. Good morning. You can also say this to anyone else you meet in the morning, um, for example, in a shop or the person you wake up next to. If it's in the afternoon, you could say this. Goedemiddag. Good afternoon. Goedemiddag. Goedemiddag. This one is much more formal than uh, Goedemorgen. Um, in the Netherlands, you can say Goedemorgen to anyone, but Goedemiddag is really only used when starting a conversation with someone you don't know. For example, at the supermarket or at the beginning of a phone call. Goedenavond. Good evening. Goedenavond. Goedenavond. Good evening. This one is pretty formal. You do best to only use it, for example, when entering a restaurant or something like that. Hoe heet u? What's your name? Hoe heet u? Hoe heet u? What's your name? Bear in mind that the Dutch have a formal U, which is U, and an informal U, which is J. So if you're asking a child um, or a classmate what his or her name is, you should probably go with who hate you. Now, after learning someone's name, you'll likely be asked um, to say yours, to which you could say, ik ben, I'm, ik ben, enter your name here. So in my case, it would be, ik ben Stella, ik ben Stella, I'm Stella. It's just your basic introduction. After you've both stated your names, uh, you'll likely shake hands and say something like this. Leuk je te ontmoeten. Nice to meet you. Leuk je te ontmoeten. Leuk je te ontmoeten. Nice to meet you. Now remember the difference between je and u. Um, if you're meeting a new client at work, uh, you may want to say leuk u te ontmoeten, just to class it up a bit. Another useful sentence right after our introductions is Hoe gaat het? How are you? Hoe gaat het? Hoe gaat het? How are you? It's a nice way to get to know a little bit about the other person. If they feel like sharing, most of the time though, they will probably just say that they're fine and leave it at that. And that would sound like this. Het gaat prima, dank je. En met jou? I'm fine, thanks. And you? Het gaat prima, dank je. En met jou? Het gaat prima, dank je. En met jou? I'm fine, thanks. And you? So when people ask you this, it's probably better not to launch into a 15-minute speech about how you are really doing. Um, keep it short and to the point. Now, here comes one that's rather ambiguous. Alstublieft. Please. Alstublieft. Alstublieft. Please. First of all, when saying this to someone you know well, um, say Alsjeblieft. Je, u, remember? Um, but whichever one you use, it can also mean, here you go. Um, so you say it when you're, when you're asking someone for something, uh, but also when handing it over. 
It's pretty confusing, right? Crazy Dutchies. When someone hands you something, um, or someone has done something nice for you, the polite thing to do is say this. Dank je. Thank you. Dank je. Dank je. Thank you. And again, if you're in a formal situation, say Dank u. Next one is uh, what you say after that. Graag gedaan. You're welcome. Graag gedaan. Graag gedaan. Now this is probably a hard one um, because of the notorious Dutch ch sound. Um, just remember, if you pull this off, you'll sound very Dutch indeed. The next two are really short and to the point. Ja. Yeah. Yes. Ja. Yeah. Ja. Yeah. Yes. Nee. No. Nee. Nee. No. Just your basic yes and no. Use them wisely. The next one is easy. Um, you'll all recognize it immediately. Okay. 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 And of course it means okay. It's the same word and you can basically spell it any way you like, so go to town. Excuseer. Excuse me. Excuseer. Excuseer. Excuse me. You can say this if you want to pass by someone and you need them to move, for example. The second way to apologize in Dutch is Het spijt me. I'm sorry. Het spijt me. Het spijt me. I'm sorry. You can also say uh, sorry if you've done a small thing wrong, but if you've really made a mess of things, um, you may want to go all the way and just go with het spijt me. So let's move on to a few short questions. First one is, hoe laat is it? What time is it? Hoe laat is it? Hoe laat is het? What time is it? A literal translation would be, how late is it? Um, but we use this whenever we just want to ask for the time. Waar is het toilet? Where is the restroom? Waar is het toilet? Waar is het toilet? Where is the restroom? So I'm sure you recognize the word toilet in there, um, but if you want to sound very Dutch, use WC for water closet. So then you would say, waar is de wc? The next one isn't a question, but a request. Wacht even. Wait a moment. Wacht even. Wacht even. Wait a moment. You can use this if someone um, is talking to you while you're busy, uh, or if you need someone to not move while you grab something from a different aisle, etc. It's a very useful sentence. So if you're in a shop and you want to ask how much something is, you can ask, Hoeveel kost dit? How much is this? Hoeveel kost dit? How much is this? So usually when you're in the Netherlands, um, there will be clear price tags on everything. Um, the Dutch don't haggle. <laughs> if you've eaten at a restaurant uh, and you want the check, say, Mag ik de rekening alstublieft? Could I get the check, please? Mag ik de rekening alstublieft? Mag ik de rekening alstublieft? Could I get the check, please? Now remember, um, Dutch people will often split the bill. Um, so if you want to ask for the check, but you don't want to necessarily imply that you'll be the one paying for it, um, you could say, Mogen wij de rekening alstublieft? Which means, um, could we get the check, please? Here's a word you really need to know, um, but you probably already do. Help. 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 It just means help. Sometimes life will throw you a bone. Tot later. See you later. If you're taking leave of someone, um, you can say Tot later. Tot later. See you later. You can also just say later. Uh, that's been catching on quickly lately. Here's a slightly more formal version of saying goodbye. Tot ziens. Goodbye. Tot ziens. Tot ziens. Goodbye. You're technically saying the same thing you were earlier. Um, it just means that you'll see each other again. But this is the one you would use in a grocery store. Um, whereas you would say tot later or later to a friend. So that's all for today. Um, these were the must-know phrases in Dutch. Uh, if there's anything missing from this list, make sure to tell me in the comments. Um, like and subscribe to this channel. Uh, and if you'd like to learn more Dutch, visit um, dutchpod101.com. Thanks and goodbye. Hi again and welcome to this next Dutch lesson. My name is Stella and today we'll be talking about some of the most important Dutch verbs. Let's get started. Zijn. Zijn. To be. 
Hij is piloot. Hij is piloot. He is a pilot. Now, like many languages, uh, Dutch has strong and weak verbs, and zijn is a typical strong verb. And that's why zijn doesn't look or sound anything like is. Hij is piloot. So, in combination with hij or zij, he or she, um, the verb zijn sounds like is. Leuk vinden. Leuk vinden. To like. Ik vind haar leuk. Ik vind haar leuk. I like her. Now, if you're saying this in Dutch, um, especially about a person, then uh, it usually means that you have a little crush on them. So be careful when you use this. Doen. Doen. To do. Wij doen de afwas. Wij doen de afwas. We are doing the dishes. This is also a strong verb, but it's recognizable here. Um, The word doen or do can be used for many different things, and there's a lot of different meanings to it, just like in English. Zeggen. Zeggen. To say. Zij zegt helemaal niets. Zij zegt helemaal niets. She says nothing at all. This is just a very neutral word. Um, If you're going to ask someone to tell you a story, then you can start the sentence with zeg. For example, you can say, Zeg, hoe is het afgelopen met John? I say, whatever happened to John? Except it's less archaic uh, in Dutch than it is in English. Horen. Horen. To hear. Ik hoor de trein. Ik hoor de trein. I hear the train. There's an easy way to remember this one, um, because the verb horen sounds a lot like oren. So, horen doe je met je oren. You hear with your ears. Gaan. Gaan. To go. Zij gaan naar huis. Zij gaan naar huis. They are going home. Gaan can also mean leaving. Um, For example, if you say, ik ga, that means I'm leaving. Weten. Weten. To know. Ik weet niets. Ik weet niets. I know nothing. Jon Snow. That's literally the only time I've ever seen that sentence. So in Dutch, unless you're quoting Game of Thrones, um, you would say, Ik weet het niet. I don't know. Nemen. Nemen. To take. Kun je de fiets nemen? Kun je de fiets nemen? Could you take the bike? So this is uh, nemen uh, in the context of Choosing a means of transportation. So, ik neem een appel means I'll take an apple. You can also say, um, ik neem de telefoon op. Uh, Opnemen means answering a phone. And you can say, ik neem een boek mee. Meenemen means to take something with you. So, the verb nemen, you can combine it with many prepositions. Zien. Zien. To see. Hij ziet heel weinig. Hij ziet heel weinig. He doesn't see much. So, zien is spelt with a z, but the Dutch aren't that particular about it, so it just sounds very slightly different from an s. So, with an s, you would say zien, and with a z, you would say zien. Do you hear it? Zien. Zien. It's a small difference, but it's there. Komen. Komen. To come. Ze komen morgen op visite. Ze komen morgen op visite. They will come and visit us tomorrow. Um, another example would be if someone calls you and you want to say I'm coming. Um, you would say Ik kom eraan. Denken. Denken. To think. Ik denk aan lekker eten. 
Ik denk aan lekker eten. I am thinking of delicious food. Here, here. Um, so unlike in some other languages, um, denken is very versatile. So you can say, ik denk aan je, I'm thinking of you. Uh, or, ik denk dat het de blauwe is, I believe it's the blue one. Um, so you can use it for both the active act of thinking and for when you mean you believe something to be true. Kijken. Kijken. To look. Ik kijk naar het huis. Ik kijk naar het huis. I'm looking at the house. This is a tricky sound if you don't speak Dutch. Um, A. That's because it's a diphthong, uh, which means it's actually consisting of two vowels, like every set of vowels in the phrase, no highway cowboys. So, no highway cowboys. Was that clear or was it just a weird sentence pronounced really slowly? I can't tell. Willen. Willen. To want. Zij wil een hond. Zij wil een hond. She wants a dog. Now, don't be fooled by those silly Dutch people who say wilt. Zij wilt. That's not correct. Um, and it, and wilt is often not the correct word. So if you want to be completely safe, just never use wilt. Always say wil. Ik wil, jij wil, hij wil. That's it. You can't go wrong with that. Geven. Geven. To give. Ik geef mijn vriend een verjaardagscadeau. Ik geef mijn vriend een verjaardagscadeau. I'm giving my friend a birthday present. You can also give other things. Um, like when you say, pas op, of ik geef je een schop. You're saying, watch out, or I'll give you a kick. Gebruiken. Gebruiken. To use. Hij gebruikt de auto. Hij gebruikt de auto. He is using the car. This is another typical example of a diphthong. Um, it's a tricky sound to make. Ui. Ui. Gebruiken. Keep practicing. Vinden. Vinden. To find. Ik kan mijn haarborstel niet vinden. Ik kan mijn haarborstel niet vinden. I can't find my hairbrush. This is a daily struggle for people like me. Um, usually when I'm saying this, I'm already holding it in my hand and I've forgotten that I found it. Uitgaan. Uitgaan. To go out. Morgen gaan we uit. Morgen gaan we uit. We will go out tomorrow. Now, this is a tricky one because uitgaan... Um, can mean to go out for drinks, like here, but it can also mean to step out of bed. For example, when you say, ik ga eruit, you mean I'm getting up. Vragen. Vragen. To ask. Vraag het aan je moeder. Vraag het aan je moeder. Ask your mother. This is what you do every time you have new clothes and you need to know how they can be laundered. Werken. Werken. To work. Zij werkt bij de bank. Zij werkt bij de bank. She works at the bank. This one sounds a lot like the English one, um, and it's almost written exactly the same way too. Work, werk, um, but then with an E instead of an O. Binnengaan. Binnengaan. To enter. Het restaurant binnengaan. Het restaurant binnengaan. To enter the restaurant. You may also say binnenlopen, um, which means the same thing, but it has the meaning of walking in there. Uh, or binnenkomen, if it's from the perspective of someone who is already inside. So if you're sitting inside and someone comes in, you would say, hij komt binnen, rather than hij gaat naar binnen. Voelen. Voelen. To feel. Ik voel het in mijn tenen. Ik voel het 
in mijn tenen. I feel it in my toes. So it's also not very difficult to see the connection here. Um, feel, voel. Okay, so to be fair, it only has three sounds and two of them have changed, but you see what I mean, right? Proberen. Proberen. To try. We proberen het gewoon nog eens. We proberen het gewoon nog eens. We will just try it again. So this is a tough one, um, because proberen sounds absolutely nothing like try. Um, they say it comes from the Latin word probare, which means tasting. So maybe that helps you. Verlaten. Verlaten. To leave. Hij verlaat het feest. Hij verlaat het feest. He is leaving the party. Now, you may want to be careful with this one because um, verlaten is a very loaded word. So it means something like to leave alone. You can also say that you feel verlaten. Ik voel me verlaten. Um, and that means that you're feeling abandoned and lonely. So be careful how you use this. Bellen. Bellen. To call. Kun je mij bellen? Kun je mij bellen? Can you call me? Um, there's an interesting background to this one. The word bellen comes from the name Alexander Graham Bell, who was the inventor of the telephone. Rennen. Rennen. To run. Het kind rent naar huis. Het kind rent naar huis. The child runs home. Here again, the words are quite alike. Um, so you would be likely to recognize it without too much trouble. The noun ren um, also refers to an enclosed piece of land for chickens or rabbits. So the more you know. So that's all for now. Um, I hope you feel like you've learned some important Dutch verbs today. Uh, so good luck practicing and if you want to learn more Dutch, go to dutchpod101.com. Thank you for liking this video and subscribing and I will see you at the next class. Have a good day. Hi there and welcome to this Dutch class. My name is Stella and today we're going to talk about some different phrases uh, that you can use to amaze native speakers of the Dutch language. Are you ready? Let's go! Dank je, maar eigenlijk ben ik geen native speaker. Thank you, but I'm not a native speaker actually. After this class, um, people will automatically assume that you're a native speaker and then you can baffle them with this sentence. Dank je, maar eigenlijk ben ik geen native speaker. Dank je. Maar eigenlijk ben ik geen native speaker. Thank you, but I'm actually not a native speaker. Um, so make sure this comes out completely fluent, uh, because you don't want to ruin the effect. Um, so did you notice that um, the Dutch verb for native speaker is just native speaker borrowed from the English? That ought to make it a little bit easier for you. Ik had maar een jaar nodig om er fluent in te worden. It only took me one year to become fluent. Next sentence. Ik had maar een jaar nodig om er vloeiend in te worden. Ik had maar een jaar nodig om er vloeiend in te worden. And this means it only took me one year to become fluent. Now don't feel bad if this is not true. Um, Dutch is a notoriously difficult language to master, so it will probably take anyone more than a year. Ik spreek in drie jaar tijd. Nederlands als een native speaker. I'll speak Dutch like a native speaker in three years. This one is a touch more realistic. Ik spreek in drie jaar tijd Nederlands als een native speaker. Ik spreek in drie jaar tijd Nederlands als een native speaker. So this sentence is said like it's like a New Year's resolution, right? So if you want to say that it has already happened, Um, then you should use the past tense. So you would say, ik sprak in drie jaar tijd, uh, instead of um, ik spreek. Ik ben al tien jaar Nederlands aan het leren. I've been learning Dutch for ten years. Uh, this next one is for everyone who feels that it's going to take some more time. Ik ben al tien jaar Nederlands aan het leren. Ik ben al tien jaar Nederlands 
aan het leren. I've been learning Dutch for 10 years. So to be honest, um, even native Dutch speakers make mistakes. Um, I've been learning Dutch for 27 years. Uh, it's a hard language, guys, so don't feel bad. Ik kan Nederlandse films zonder ondertiteling kijken. I can watch Dutch movies without subtitles. Here's one that's a true accomplishment, and it's within reach. Ik kan Nederlandse films zonder ondertiteling kijken. Ik kan Nederlandse films zonder ondertiteling kijken. And this means I can watch Dutch movies without subtitles. Um, now the only question remaining is why would you want to watch Dutch movies? I'm just kidding. There's one movie that I really do uh, like and can recommend and it's called Minus. Um, the story is by Annie M. G. Schmidt uh, and it has Caris van Houten in it. So it's a really great movie about a woman who's actually a cat, I think. Ik kan ongeveer 50 nieuwe Nederlandse woorden per dag onthouden. I can memorize around 50 new Dutch words a day. Next phrase. Ik kan ongeveer 50 nieuwe Nederlandse woorden per dag onthouden. Ik kan ongeveer 50 nieuwe Nederlandse woorden onthouden. I can memorize around 50 new Dutch words a day. So if that's really true, then I applaud you. 50 words is a lot to remember in one day. Nederlands is leuk en makkelijk te leren. Dutch is fun and easy to learn. Nederlands is leuk en makkelijk te leren. Nederlands is leuk en makkelijk te leren. Dutch is fun and easy to learn. Now, to be completely honest, I don't agree with this. Um, I feel it's disheartening to say that any language is easy to learn. Um, I mean, sure, we're trying to make it as easy as we can for you, um, but it takes a lot of hard work and also it really depends on what language you're coming from. Like if you already speak German or something, it'll be a lot easier. Um, so ho however hard or easy you think it is, go you, and uh, you're doing great. Naast het Nederlands kan ik ook nog een paar andere talen spreken. Apart from Dutch, I can speak a few other languages as well. Naast het Nederlands kan ik ook een paar andere talen spreken. Naast het Nederlands kan ik ook een paar andere talen spreken. Apart from Dutch, I can speak a few other languages as well. So if you're watching this, um, you at least speak English fairly well, and probably a little Dutch by now. Um, so good job. And if you don't feel that that's enough, uh, I can recommend Swedish. It's a pretty language. Ik leer Nederlands helemaal zelf. I'm learning Dutch all by myself. Ik leer Nederlands helemaal zelf. Ik leer Nederlands helemaal zelf. I'm learning Dutch all by myself. If you are, don't do that. Um, the key to any language is communication. Uh, and really listening and speaking with others would really help you learning this language. So whenever you can, try to practice your listening and speaking skills with a buddy who's also learning Dutch or even better with a Dutch native speaker. Um, so studying by yourself is impressive, but learning with a friend is faster and more fun. So try to find someone to study with. Ik begreep alles van wat je zei. I completely understood everything you said. Now, if things are going really well, and someone is unsure about your Dutch skills, um, you can say this. Ik begreep alles van wat je zei. Ik begreep alles van wat je zei. I completely understood everything you said. Um, so Dutch people will switch to English when they uh, think that maybe um, it's easier for you. So to prevent them from doing that, um, make sure you can say the sentence so you can practice your listening skills and speaking skills too, maybe. So, congratulations on finishing this lesson in 10 phrases you can use to amaze native Dutch speakers with. Um, thank you for watching. If there's anything you want to know uh, more about, let me know in the comments. Um, remember to subscribe, and if you want to learn more Dutch, you can go to dutchpod101.com. Thanks for watching. Hi there, you here to learn some Dutch? My name is Stella, and today we'll be talking about some very important autumn vocabulary. Let's go! The first word of the day is trui, sweater. Mijn trui is te klein. Mijn trui is te klein. My sweater is too small.
Now, this can be a tough word to pronounce because of the O sound and a throaty R. T-r-r-r-r-r-r-r-r-r-r-r-r-r-r-r-r-r-r-r-r-r-r-r-r-r-r-r-r-r-r-r-r-r-r-r-r-r-r-r-r-r-r-r-r-r-r-r-r-r-
The option on the bottom left is for an express ticket. Snel train kaartje. You are at a train station where you've just bought an express ticket. Which train car row and seat number are you in? Which train car row and seat number are you in? The ticket says that you're in train car number one in the eighth row in seat C. Treinstel nummer 1, rij 8, stoel C. You are at a train station where you're reading the train schedule for an express ticket that you've just bought. On which days are there no express trains running? On which days are there no express trains running? There are no express trains running on public holidays and the third Sunday of every month. Nationale feestdagen, derde zondag van elke maand. You are on a platform at a train station where you're waiting for your train. Suddenly, a message appears on the display. What does the message on the display mean? What does the message on the display mean? The display reads, the next train will not stop. De volgende trein zal niet stoppen. You are at a train station where you're looking for the best exit to catch a taxi. Which exit should you take to get to the taxi rank? Which exit should you take to get to the taxi rank? You should take the east exit in order to get to the taxi rank. Uitgang Oost You just bought a few items from a local shop online. What information does the website say about the delivery date?
What information does the website say about the delivery date? The website says that delivery dates differ depending on the delivery method, but all dates should be calculated from the next working day. Leveringsdata verschillen afhankelijk van de verzendmethode, maar alle data moeten worden berekend vanaf de volgende werkdag. The day after ordering an item online, you receive an email notification. How can you track your package? How can you track your package? The email says that you can track your package on this website by logging into your account. And after logging in, click on your order history and enter the order number found in this email. U kunt uw pakket traceren door in te loggen met uw gegevens op deze website. Na het inloggen, klik op uw bestelgeschiedenis en toets het bestelnummer in wat u in deze e-mail vindt. You're reading the instructions of an electronic device you've just bought. What should you do in case of overheating? What should you do in case of overheating? The manual says that if you notice the surface overheating, unplug the device immediately and allow it to cool down before handling again. Als u merkt dat de oppervlakte oververhit raakt, ontkoppel het apparaat onmiddellijk en laat het eerst afkoelen alvorens weer te gebruiken. Does having a study partner help you learn a language faster? For most people, having a friend or romantic partner who is a native speaker of their target language dramatically improves their ability to master the language. In this video, we'll talk about some ways to help you build relationships with people. We'll also talk about three reasons having a native speaker partner can improve your language fluency. First, knowing a native speaker helps you better understand the culture. 
Knowing a native speaker gets you connected with the culture in ways that no lessons or textbooks ever could. Native speakers are better informed about the latest slang expressions and know interesting places to eat and hang out. Having a friend or partner who is a native speaker can dramatically improve your understanding of the language. In addition to language, you can learn about cultural practices, gestures, and relationships. Second, having a native speaker partner increases your exposure to the language. Practice makes perfect is a well-known expression that is certainly true for language learning. When you have a friend, romantic partner, or study buddy, you speak to them through text messages, phone calls, and basic interaction. These are all opportunities for you to practice the language. Making an effort to practice will help your vocabulary quickly expand beyond simple greetings, flirtatious words, and basic comments to deeper, more meaningful conversations. Third, a supportive partner is the best study aid you can find. We all make mistakes, especially when trying to learn a new language. But if you have a supportive partner, they can gently point out your mistakes and help you find better ways to express yourself. And if your native speaker study partner is also your romantic partner, your motivation will likely be even higher than someone who does not have a romantic relationship with a native speaker. Now, let's look at three ways our language learning program helps you learn even faster if you have a native speaker partner. First, all resources and materials are available in English and in your target language. Studying with a partner is special because it's an opportunity for both of you to learn a new language. That's why every single lesson, transcript, vocabulary list, and resource on our website is available in English and in your target language. You can learn from each other. Second, lessons are designed to help you understand and engage with culture. On our website, our focus is to help our students learn practical vocabulary and phrases that are actually used in everyday conversation. This means that from your very first lesson, you can start applying what you learn immediately. So if you want to go out to a restaurant, play games, or attend a social function with your partner, you'll have the vocabulary and phrases necessary to have a great time. Third, access to special resources dedicated to romantic phrases. If your study partner is your romantic partner, we have resources to help you communicate your feelings correctly. Our language learning program has special sections and tools to teach you love words, phrases, and cultural insights. Of course, please remember that simply being in a relationship is no substitute for studying. Communication is key to every relationship, whether romantic or not. If you fail to continue expanding your vocabulary and you stop learning the language on your own, your relationships may suffer or fizzle out. Without question, spending time with native speakers can help you dramatically improve your language proficiency. But this is no replacement for focused studying. It's essential to help facilitate better communication and master the language. When learning a new language, we sometimes have a hard time with things like procrastination, discouragement, or failure. But don't panic. With a good strategy, you'll be able to overcome these difficulties. Are you ready to discover the four habits of successful learners? Number one, optimize your time. When learning a language, it's important to dedicate time to your studies regularly, even if sometimes it's difficult. You're busy with school, work, family, or friends, but you can spread out your learning throughout the day. Study whenever you have small gaps of time in your busy schedule. This can be when you're on the metro, on your lunch break, or while you're exercising. Our podcast learning format fits perfectly into your tight schedule. Number two, consistency with your chosen method. There are a lot of options when it comes to courses and learning materials. Switching from one method to another can confuse you and disrupt your progress. Focusing on one learning method will make a difference. Our method has been created and optimized by real teachers, so you can stick to it with confidence. Number three, use your language background. Many languages share some commonalities. You can find words that look or sound similar, or even share the same grammar structure. A little bit of language background will give you an edge while learning. Number four, study continuously. People are excited when they start learning a new language. The enthusiasm usually lasts until the first roadblock. This can lead to discouragement and procrastination. But don't burn yourself out. Learning a language is a marathon, not a sprint. Don't try to learn it all at once. Break things down into more digestible chunks. Learning step-by-step step might feel slow, but it's an efficient way to learn a language. With patience, motivation, and good resources, you'll master the language. Remember, you can't learn a language overnight, but with motivation and these daily lessons, you'll be on the road to fluency. Give it a try now. Sign up for your account. 
just click the link in the description. Hi guys, welcome to this Dutch lesson where I, Stella, will be teaching you 20 very important things um, you need to know when you go to the beach. So let's get started. Zonnebril. Zonnebril. Sunglasses. Vergeet je zonnebril niet. Vergeet je zonnebril niet. Don't forget your sunglasses. So if you're anything like me, you probably forget your sunglasses half the time and spend all day squinting against the sun. Um, so this is a really great first word. It's before you even get to the beach that this is important. Strand. Strand. Beach. Het is druk op het strand. Het is druk op het strand. The beach is crowded. So Dutch beaches are often crowded um, because if it is warm, then everyone within a two hour drive wants to go to the beach. So traffic is insane and the beaches are, yeah, well, crowded. <laughs> zwemmen. Zwemmen. Swimming. Laten we gaan zwemmen. Laten we gaan zwemmen. Let's go swimming. Swimming is one of my favorite things to do in the summer. Um, in winter as well, but then you would really need to go to a pool. Um, because the Dutch Sea is really only doable between, say, June and September or something. Zon. Zon. Sun. De zon is een ster. De zon is een ster. The sun is a star. So the Dutch word zon is quite close to the English word sun, uh, so it should be easy enough to remember. Um, and now you've also learned the word for star, which is ster. Palmboom. Palmboom. Palm tree. Ik zie twee palmbomen. Ik zie twee palmbomen. I see two palm trees. Now, actually, a palm tree is not really typical for Dutch beaches because they don't grow here. Um, but you'll see them in pots from time to time at beach restaurants or whatever. Schelp. Schelp. Seashell. Heb je wel eens een schelp gegeten? Heb je wel eens een schelp gegeten? Have you ever eaten a seashell? That just seems like the most random question ever. Like, have you ever inhaled a tree or something? Um, don't eat seashells, guys. It's, it's not what they're for. It would be a mistake. Uh, however, the word schelp um, is a good one to practice because it has that tricky Dutch sch sound at the beginning. Charming, isn't it? Buzzbuck. Badbak. Swimsuit. Mijn zus heeft een blauw badbak. Mijn zus heeft een blauw badbak. My sister has a blue swimsuit. It's probably important to tell you that the word badbak only means like a one-piece swimsuit. Um, so it's not a bikini. A bikini is not a badbak. Um, where I guess it would be a swimsuit. So there's a distinction there. Oceaan. Oceaan. Ocean. De walvis zwemt in de oceaan. De walvis zwemt in de oceaan. The whale is swimming in the ocean. It's an easy one, right? I mean, it's just the same as the English word ocean, except there's an extra A in there and you move the stress to that A. It's oceaan. Kustwacht. Kustwacht. Lifeguard. Er is een kustwacht op het strand. Er is een kustwacht op het strand. There's a lifeguard at the beach. Now this one is a little tricky um, because kustwacht is also like the beach police. So it's not just, they, they, I think they also come out to rescue you if you're in trouble. But they also, I mean, if, if you do something illegal or whatever, they also get in their boat and go out there. Jet ski. Jet ski. Jet ski. Who would have thought? Mijn oom heeft een jet ski gekocht. Mijn oom heeft een jet ski gekocht. My uncle has bought a jet ski. So, you don't really see jet skis a lot at Dutch beaches, but it happens, I suppose. Um, at least you would have trouble remembering this one. Strandlaken. Strandlaken. Beach towel. Ik kan een strandlaken niet vinden. Ik kan mijn strandlaken niet vinden. I can't find my beach towel. Another word we use a lot is just handdoek, which just means towel. 
Um, and laken actually means sheet. So strandlaken put together means beach sheet. Um, and that's because they're usually larger than our regular towels. Strandstoel. Strandstoel. Beach chair. Reserveer alsjeblieft een strandstoel. Reserveer alsjeblieft een strandstoel. Please reserve a beach chair. Or if you want the full experience, you can just drop your strandlaken in the sand and sit on that. Zandkasteel. Zandkasteel. Sandcastle. We bouwen een zandkasteel. We bouwen een zandkasteel. We are building a sandcastle. So this word can be easily split up into two parts, which is zand, sand, and kasteel, castle. I bet you didn't see that one coming, did you? Coolbox. Coolbox. Cooler. Kun je de coolbox meenemen? Kun je de coolbox meenemen? Can you take the cooler? Again, here's a word that's easy to recognize um, because you're saying cool box, but with a Dutch accent. Cool box. Vloed. Vloed. High tide. Het is vloed. Het is vloed. It's high tide. So, vloed means high tide, and the word for low tide is ebb, with E-B. Um, so, it's ebb and vloed. And if you're listening carefully, you can hear the similarity with ebb and flow. Zonnen. Zonnen. To tan. Ik hou van zonnen. Ik hou van zonnen. I love to tan. Now, zonnen also means just sunbathing. Um, because Dutch people, we don't really tan easily, mostly. So make sure you always use plenty of sunscreen to protect yourself from the harmful sun rays. Snorkelen. Snorkelen. Snorkeling. In Egypte kun je goed snorkelen. In Egypte kun je goed snorkelen. Egypt is great for snorkeling. So here again we have a word that is very much the same in both English and Dutch. Um, I've always wondered whether it's supposed to sound like bubbles. Snorkeling. Is that just me? Slipper. Slipper. Flip-flop. Ik heb drie slippers. Ik heb drie slippers. I have three flip-flops. This phrase really made me laugh, because why would you have three flip-flops? <laughs> um, anyway, this is easy to mix up, because we do have the word slippers, like in English. Uh, it just doesn't mean exactly the same thing. So if you're trying to say slippers, then use flip-flops. Zonnebrand. Zonnebrand. Sunscreen. Dat is een grote fles zonnebrand. Dat is een grote fles zonnebrand. That's a big bottle of sunscreen. Now, an interesting thing about this word is that zonnebrand literally means sun and burn. So the full term is zonnebrandcreme, so sunburn cream, to protect against sunburn. Um, but people just leave out the last bit. Um, that's because unlike in English, you can't have sunburn in Dutch. Uh, you can't say, ik heb zonnebrand, um, unless you mean the product. So, if you want to say you have a sunburn, you would say, ik ben verbrand, which would literally translate to, I am burned. So, keep in mind, zonnebrand means sunscreen, even though you're only literally saying sunburn. Bikini. 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 Oh, nee, ik ben mijn bikini vergeten. Oh, nee. Ik ben mijn Bikini vergeten. Oh no, I forgot my bikini. This one's not very difficult to wrap your head around, is it? I don't think this needs any further explanation. Right, you've reached the end of this lesson. Um, thank you for sticking with it. It was a long one. Uh, you now know many words you can use when going to the beach. That's all for now. Goodbye and have fun at the beach. Hello and welcome to this next Dutch lesson. My name is Stella and today we're going to talk about 10 words and phrases you'll need when you're going back to school at the beginning of the school year. Um, it's never easy, but at least now you will know what to say. Heb je je huiswerk af? Heb je je huiswerk af? Did you finish your homework? So, the Dutch word for finishing something is afmaken, and the word for having finished it is afhebben. So, that's why it's heb je je huiswerk af. 
Um, we don't have a separate word for to finish something. Klasgenoot. Klasgenoot. Classmate. John is mijn klasgenoot. John is mijn klasgenoot. John is my classmate. Now this word is really only used in the diminutive form, klasgenootje. Um, if you're adults and that feels too weird, then you can also say iemand uit mijn klas, which means someone from my class. And it's much more neutral. Klasgenootje implies that you're great friends. Huiswerk. Huiswerk. Homework. Elke dag maak ik mijn huiswerk. Elke dag maak ik mijn huiswerk. Every day I do my homework. Everyone's favorite word, isn't it? Again, this one is difficult because many people found, find that ou klank difficult to pronounce. Um, you could compare it to like a really posh pronunciation of over. So like over, o, o, huiswerk. That makes any sense. Examen, examen, exam. Er is een belangrijk examen in mei. Er is een belangrijk examen in mei. There is an important exam in mei. Now, to be honest, we only use the word examen when it's the final exam of something. So, like, at the end of high school is an exam. Um, if not, we usually say tentamen. But let's not get too bogged down in the complications of the Dutch educational system. Zomervakantie. Zomervakantie. Summer break. In de zomervakantie ga ik op vakantie. In de zomervakantie ga ik op vakantie. I will go on holiday during the summer break. Should I repeat that word vakantie a couple more times? No? It's a lot like vacation, so it's an easy one to remember. School. 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 Ik vind school niet leuk. Ik vind school niet leuk. I don't like school. Or maybe you do like school, I don't know, do you? Um, it's not a very tricky sound to get right, especially if you're just starting out with learning Dutch. Sch and then O. Oh. It's a difficult combination. Don't feel bad if you're not getting it on the first try. Studeren. Studeren. To study. Mijn zus studeert biologie. Mijn zus studeert biologie. My sister studies biology. Now, studeren means two things. Um, the first meaning is that you're attending a university. And the second meaning is that you're busy studying at the moment. So, kind of like in English. Het is de eerste schooldag. Het is de eerste schooldag. It's the first day of class. I wish I could come up with some positive association for you guys, like making new friends or whatever, but to be honest, I'm just really glad I don't have to go through that anymore. Um, growing up is awesome, guys. We zitten in dezelfde klas. We zitten in dezelfde klas. We're in the same class. So here's a funny thing with Dutch. Um, we will often use the verb zitten, so sitting, if what we mean is being. Um, so this literally says we're sitting in the same class, um, but it just means that we are in the same class. Welke lessen volg je? Welke lessen volg je? What classes are you taking? As you can hear, the Dutch word les, which is the singular of lesson, um, is not like the English lesson except that lesson is singular. Also, um, volgen means following. So it's like saying you're following a class. You finished this lesson and going back to school, so congratulations, you are now completely prepared for your first day of class. If there are any other words or phrases you would like to hear, um, let me know in the comment section. Remember to like and subscribe. And if you want to learn more Dutch, go and visit dutchpod101.com. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time. Hi there. Are you ready to learn some new Dutch words? My name is Stella and today we'll be talking about gift ideas. Let's get started. Boek. Book. Mijn vader leest graag boeken. Mijn vader leest graag boeken. My father likes to read books.
I also love books, but to be honest, um, I don't think they make for very good gifts unless I've specifically requested to have that book. Um, otherwise, it just feels like a chore. Parfum. Perfume. Heb je het nieuwe parfum al? Heb je het nieuwe parfum al? Do you already have that new perfume? Um, another really easy one. Uh, do you guys wear perfume? I have one that smells like fresh laundry and I use that a lot. It's the best scent ever. Next one's also very easy, guys. You, you got this. Camera. Camera. Een dure camera kopen. Een dure camera kopen. To buy an expensive camera. This is another insanely expensive gift. It even says so. I mean, here's an idea. If someone loves photography, um, get them a nice accessory, like a filter or an easy way to store their lens cap or something. Whew. Oh, this one isn't really better, though. Smartphone. Smartphone. Zij heeft de nieuwste smartphone. Zij heeft de nieuwste smartphone. She has the newest smartphone. I definitely don't have the newest smartphone. I've had mine repaired like three times and it still works well. Um, it's much better for the environment that way, though the battery does drain very quickly. Spell computer. Game console. The PS3 is my favorite spell computer. The PS3 is my favorite spell computer. The PS3 is my favorite console. What's your favorite console? I got a Game Boy Color when I was like nine or something, I think. And I don't think I let it out of my hands for the first five years after that. <laughs> Good times. Woordenboek. Dictionary. Vandalen is a Nederlands woordenboek. Vandalen is a Nederlands woordenboek. Vandalen is a Dutch dictionary. Why would you give someone a dictionary as a gift? Like, happy birthday, here's some light reading. Um, I don't know, unless you're really into the dictionary game, I don't really see how this would be a great gift. Unless you're learning Dutch and it's a Dutch dictionary, of course. Next word. A vlucht naar Nederland. A flight to the Netherlands. Volgende week ga ik een vlucht naar Nederland boeken. Volgende week ga ik een vlucht naar Nederland boeken. Next week, I'm going to book a flight to the Netherlands. Now I see why this dictionary might come in handy. Uh -huh. Practice the pronunciation on this one. Um, that ch sound is pretty hard. Vlucht. Kleding. Clothes. Zij koopt elke maand nieuwe kleding. Zij koopt elke maand nieuwe kleding. Every month, she buys new clothes. Um, instead of kleding... You can also say kleren, um, which also means clothes. Um, and an interesting thing about the word kleren is that it's plurale tantum, which means the word doesn't exist in singular form. Fles wijn. Bottle of wine. Een fles wijn graag. Een fles wijn graag. A bottle of wine, please. Now here's a gift that most adults will appreciate. Um, I mean, even if they don't drink wine themselves, you can always, you know, use it when guests come to visit or something. Next word. Fiets. Bicycle. Heb jij ook een fiets? Heb jij ook een fiets? Do you also have a bicycle? In the Netherlands, everyone has a bicycle. It's not even a valid question, really, if someone has one. You just, you do. Um, I think I know literally one person who doesn't have a bike, and that's because it just got stolen. So the roads here are very bicycle-friendly, and it's a great way to get around. Well, that concludes our lesson for today, guys. Um, thank you for watching. Remember to like and subscribe, please. And if you want to learn more Dutch, go visit dutchpod101.com. Um, have a great day, and I'll see you next time. Bye. Want to speed up your language learning? Get access to all of our best PDF cheat sheets for free. Just click the link in the description and sign up for your free lifetime account right now. Accountant. Boekhouder. Boekhouder. Actor. Acteur. Acteur. Advertisement. Advertentie. 
advertentie. Afford. Kunnen veroorloven. Kunnen veroorloven. Agenda. 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 Apply. Soliciteren. Soliciteren. To approve. Goedkeuren. Goedkeuren. Architect. 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 Art. Kunst. Kunst. Artist. Kunstenaar. Kunstenaar. Assign. Toewijzen. Toewijzen. Attendance rate. Opkomstpercentage. Opkomstpercentage. Avoid. Vermijden. Vermijden. Backpack. Rugzak. Rugzak. Bilingual. Tweetalig. Tweetalig. Bill. Rekening. Rekening. Biology. Biologie. Biologie. Blackboard. Schoolbord. Schoolbord. Bonus. 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 Book. Book. Boek. Baas. 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 Branch. Tak. Tak. Brand. Merk. Merk. Budget. Begroting. Begroting. Bully. Pesten. Pesten. Business. Zaken. Zaken. Business trip. Zakenreis. Zakenreis. Businessman. Zakenman. Zakenman. Buy. Kopen. Kopen. Cafeteria. Cafetaria. Cafetaria. Calculator. Rekenmachine. Rekenmachine. Campus. 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 Cancel. Annuleren. Annuleren. Career. 
carrière, carrière, chair, stool, stool, chairman, voorzitter, voorzitter. Check. Reguleren. Reguleren. Chemistry. Scheikunde. Scheikunde. Chief. Chef. Chef. Class. Les. Les. Classmate. Klasgenoot. Klasgenoot. Classroom. Klaslokaal. Klaslokaal. Clerk. 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 Client. Klant. Klant. College. 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 Commission. Commissie. Commissie. Commute. Pendelen. Pendelen. Company. Bedrijf. Bedrijf. Company worker. Arbeider. Arbeider. Competitor. Concurrent. Concurrent. Computer. 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 Computer science. Computer technology. Computer technology. Conference. Conferentie. Conferentie. Confirm. Bevestigen. Bevestigen. Construction worker. Bouwvakker. Bouwvakker. Cook. Wie komt er morgenavond mee eten? Wie komt er morgenavond mee eten? Copier. Kopieermachine. Kopieermachine. Cost. Kosten. Kosten. Coworker. Collega. Collega. Credit. Studiepunt. Studiepunt. Customer. Klant. Klant. Database. 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 Deadline. 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 Debt. Schuld. Schuld. Decision. Beslissing. Beslissing. Decrease. Verminderen. 
verminderen. Deficit. Tekort. Tekort. Degree. Diploma. Diploma. Dentist. Tandarts. Tandarts. Department. Afdeling. Afdeling. Department. Afdeling. Afdeling. Desk. Bureau. Bureau. Detective. 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 Dictionary. Woordenboek. Woordenboek. Director. Directeur. Directeur. To discount. Korting geven. Korting geven. Dispatch. Uitzenden. Uitzenden. Dissertation. Thesis. Thesis. Distribute. Distribueren. Distribueren. Distribution. Distributie. Distributie. Doctor. Dokter. Dokter. Doctorate. Doctoraal. Doctoraal. Document. 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 Dormitory. Studentenhuis. Studentenhuis. Driver. Chauffeur. Chauffeur. Economics. Economie. Economie. Education. Opleiding. Opleiding. Elementary school. Basisschool. Basisschool. Employ. Aannemen. Aannemen. Employee. Werknemer. Werknemer. Employer. Werkgever. Werkgever. Employment. Werkverschaffing. Werkverschaffing. Engineer. Ingenieur. Ingenieur. Enterprise. Onderneming. Onderneming. Equipment. Gereedschap. Gereedschap. Eraser. Gum. 
Chum. Essay. Opstel. Opstel. Estimate. Schatting. Schatting. Exam. Examen. Examen. Exchange. Uitwisselen. Uitwisselen. Executive. Directeur. Directeur. Expand. Uitbreiden. Uitbreiden. Experience. Ervaring. Ervaring. Experiment. 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 Expert. Deskundige. Deskundige. Facility. Faciliteit. Faciliteit. Factory. Fabriek. Fabriek. Factory worker. Fabrieksarbeider. Fabrieksarbeider. Fair. Kermis. Kermis. Farmer. Boer. Boer. Feedback. 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 Field. Gebied. Gebied. Final. Eindexamen. Eindexamen. Fire. Uit het ziekenhuis ontslagen worden. Uit het ziekenhuis ontslagen worden. Firefighter. Brandweerman. Brandweerman. Flight attendant. Stewardess. Stewardess. Folder. Map. Map. Geography. Aardrijkskunde. Aardrijkskunde. Glue. Lijm. Lijm. Goal. Doel. Doel. Goods. Goederen. Goederen. Grade. Cijfer. Cijfer. Gym. Gymnastiekzaal. Gymnastiekzaal. Headquarters. Hoofdkantoor. Hoofdkantoor. High school. High school. High school. Higher. 
huren, huren. History, geschiedenis, geschiedenis. Holiday, vrije dag, vrije dag. Homework. Huiswerk. Huiswerk. Housewife. Huisvrouw. Huisvrouw. Income. Inkomen. Inkomen. Increase. Toenemen. Toenemen. Industry. Industrie. Industrie. Inform. Informeren. Informeren. Information. Informatie. Informatie. Information technology. Informatie technologie. Informatie technologie. Interview. 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 Investigation. Onderzoek. Onderzoek. Investor. Investeerder. Investeerder. Job. Ban. Ban. Join. Toetreden. Toetreden. Journalist. 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 Judge. Jurylid. Jurylid. Keyboard. Toetsenbord. Toetsenbord. Knowledge. Kennis. Kennis. Laboratory. Laboratorium. Laboratorium. Language. Taal. Taal. Laptop. 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 Lawyer. Advocaat. Advocaat. Lead. Load. Load. Learn. Leren. Leren. Lecture. Lezing. Lezing. Lesson. 
less, less. Library. Bibliotheek. Bibliotheek. Listen. Horen. Horen. Literature. Literatuur. Literatuur. Mail carrier. Postbode. Postbode. Manager. 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 Marker. Veldstift. Veldstift. Market. Markt. Markt. Marketing. 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 Mathematics. Wiskunde. Wiskunde. Mechanical pencil. Vulpotlood. Vulpotlood. Meeting. Vergadering. Vergadering. Memorize. Uit het hoofd leren. Uit het hoofd leren. Middle school. Middelbare school. Middelbare school. Monitor. 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 Music. Muziek. Muziek. Notebook. Schrift. Schrift. Nurse. Verpleegster. Verpleegster. Objective. Doelstelling. Doelstelling. Occupation. Beroep. Beroep. Offer. Aanbod. Aanbod. Office. Kantoor. Kantoor. Office worker. Kantoorbediende. Kantoorbediende. Order. Bestelling. Bestelling. Output. Productie. Productie. Overtime. Overwerk. Overwerk. Paintbrush. Verfkwast. Verfkwast. Paper. Papier. Papier. Paperclip. 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 Part-time job. Part-time work. Part-time work. Payment. 
betaling, betaling, pen, 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 pencil, potlood, potlood, philosophy, philosophy. Philosophie. Physical education. Lichamelijke opvoeding. Lichamelijke opvoeding. Physics. Natuurkunde. Natuurkunde. Pilot. 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 Plagiarism. Plagiat. Plagiat. The act or process of drawing up plans or layouts for some project or enterprise. Planning. Planning. Podium. 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 Police officer. Politieagent. Politieagent. Politician. Politicus. Politicus. Politics. Politiek. Politiek. Portfolio. Portefeuille. Portefeuille. Presentation. Presentatie. Presentatie. President. Voorzitter. Voorzitter. President. 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 Principal. Directeur. Directeur. Printer. 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 Product. 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 Production. Productie. Productie. Professional athlete. Beroepsatleet. Beroepsatleet. Professor. 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 Profit. Winst. Winst. Project. 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 Projector. 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 Promotion. Promoci. Promoci. Psychology. 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 Purchase. Aankoop. Aankoop. Qualification. Kwaliteit. Kwaliteit. Question. Vraag. Vraag. Quiz. 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 
read. Voorlezen. Voorlezen. Real estate agent. Makelaarster. Makelaarster. Recruit. Recruteren. Recruteren. Refund. Terugbetalen. Terugbetalen. Repeat. Herhalen. Herhalen. Research. Onderzoeken. Onderzoeken. Researcher. Onderzoeker. Onderzoeker. Responsibility. Verantwoordelijkheid. Verantwoordelijkheid. Retailer. Detailhandelaar. Detailhandelaar. Retire. Pensioneren. Pensioneren. Rubber band. Elastiek. Elastiek. Ruler. Lineaal. Lineaal. Salary. Loan. Loan. Sales. Omzet. Omzet. Salesperson. Verkoper. Verkoper. Schedule. Planning. Planning. School. 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 School year. School year. School year. Science. Wetenschap. Wetenschap. Scientist. Wetenschapper. Wetenschapper. Scissors. Schaar. Schaar. Screen. Scherm. Scherm. Secretary. Secretaresse. Secretaresse. Shift. Ploeg. Ploeg. Want to speed up your language learning? Get access to all of our best PDF cheat sheets for free. Just click the link in the description and sign up for your free lifetime account right now. Arrive. Arriveren. Arriveren. Ask. Vragen. Vragen. Bathe. 
baden, baden, become, worden, worden, begin, beginnen, beginnen, to believe, geloven. Geloven. Break. Breken. Breken. Brush. Poetsen. Poetsen. Buy. Kopen. Kopen. Call. Telefoneren. Telefoneren. Can. Kunnen. Kunnen. Clean. Schoonmaken. Schoonmaken. Close. Dichtbij. Dichtbij. Come. Komen. Komen. Cook. Koken. Koken. Correct. Corrigeren. Corrigeren. Cry. Huilen. Huilen. Cut. Snijden. Snijden. Dance. Dansen. Dansen. Do. Doen. Doen. Draw. Tekenen. Tekenen. Dream. Dromen. Dromen. Drink. Drinken. Drinken. Eat. Eten. Eten. Enter. Binnen gaan. Binnen gaan. Erase. Uitgommen. Uitgommen. Exercise. Trainen. Trainen. Exist. Bestaan. Bestaan. Explain. Uitleggen. Uitleggen. Feel. Voelen. Voelen. Finish. Beëindigen. Beëindigen. Forget. Vergeten. Vergeten. Freeze. Bevriezen. Bevriezen. Get up. Opstaan. Opstaan. Go. Gaan. Gaan. Hear. Horen. Horen. 
help. Helpen. Helpen. Hold. Houden. Houden. Hug. Knuffelen. Knuffelen. Laugh. Lachen. Lachen. Learn. Leren. Leren. Leave. Vertrekken. Vertrekken. To like. Houden van. Houden van. Listen. Horen. Horen. Live. Wonen. Wonen. Look. Kijken. Kijken. Love. Houden van. Houden van. Make. Maken. Maken. Memorize. Uit het hoofd leren. Uit het hoofd leren. Miss. Missen. Missen. Need. Nodig hebben. Nodig hebben. Open. Openen. Openen. Pay. Betalen. Betalen. Pick up. Opnemen. Opnemen. Prepare. Voorbereiden. Voorbereiden. Pull. Trekken. Trekken. Push. Duwen. Duwen. Rain. Regenen. Regenen. Read. Voorlezen. Voorlezen. Remember. Herinneren. Herinneren. Rent. Huren. Huren. Repeat. Herhalen. Herhalen. Resemble. Lijken. Lijken. Respect. Respecteren. Respecteren. Rest. Rusten. Rusten. Return. Teruggeven. Teruggeven. Ride. Rijden. Rijden. Say. Zeggen. Zeggen. Search. Zoeken. Zoeken. See. Zien. 
zien. Sell. Verkopen. Verkopen. Send. Sturen. Sturen. Serve. Serveren. Serveren. Shop. Winkelen. Winkelen. Sightsee. Rondrit maken. Rondrit maken. Sing. Singen. Singen. Sleep. Slapen. Slapen. Speak. Spreken. Spreken. Stand. Staan. Staan. Stay. Blijven. Blijven. Study. Studeren. Studeren. Sweat. Zweten. Zweten. Take. Nemen. Nemen. Talk. Praten. Praten. Teach. Lesgeven. Lesgeven. Text. SMS'en. SMS'en. Thank. Danken. Danken. To think. Nadenken. Nadenken. Travel. Reizen. Reizen. Turn off. Uitschakelen. Uitschakelen. Turn on. Aandoen. Aandoen. To understand. Begrijpen. Begrijpen. Use. Gebruiken. Gebruiken. Wait. Wachten. Wachten. Wake up. Wakker worden. Wakker worden. Walk. Lopen. Lopen. Want. Willen. Willen. Watch. Kijken. Kijken. Wipes. Vegen. Vegen. Work. Werken. Werken. Write. Schrijven. Schrijven. I will introduce a bit of the historical development of Dutch and German. Then I'll give some background information on how the pronunciation of the languages grew apart. After that I will go deeper into specific differences between Dutch and German. The first specific difference I will be discussing is the spelling and cases. 
The second specific difference I will be discussing is related to grammar. Before we jump in, a small disclaimer. I am fluent in German, but while learning German I didn't quite get rid of my Dutch accent. So German audience, I'm sorry for butchering the pronunciation. Let's jump in. In ye good old times, around the time of the Roman Empire, the Proto-Germanic language was spread out north of the Roman Empire. Because when in Rome, do as the Romans do. Which, in this case, meant speaking Latin instead of the barbaric Proto-Germanic. North of the Roman border, so in Austria, Germany, the Netherlands, Denmark, and in part of Scandinavia, Proto-Germanic was the most important language. To the west, the Slavic and Uralic language sphere was situated. This is Finland, Poland, Hungary, down to the Balkans and east towards Russia. Now you know where the Proto-Germanic language sphere was located. So let's fast forward right to around the fall of the West Roman Empire. Around the fall of Rome is when the High German consonant shift slowly started to happen. This means that over the course of many generations the language changed. It took roughly three to four hundred years. However, the High German consonant shift did not happen in Low German and Dutch. Low German? Where did that come from? Let me explain. Because of the standardization of German, Low German slowly became a dialect after the High German consonant shift took place. The High German became the standard German. Low German is still spoken in the northern part of Germany, but the amount of speakers is dwindling. Just to clarify something about High German to avoid confusion. High German is called High German because it was spoken in the German Alps, up high. In German, it's called Hochdeutsch, which is also translated as Standard German. This may lead to some confusion, so make sure you have the right Hochdeutsch in mind when reading something on this subject. Low German is called Low German because it was spoken in the lowlands of German. To avoid confusion, in Germany they sometimes say Old High German to clarify which German they're talking about. Alright, the consonant shift takes place in four phases. Another three shifts happen which officially aren't categorized. Let's walk through them. The first phase saw three changes. The first one being that words ending with a P sound change to a F sound. Let's look at the word ape as an example. In Dutch it's aap and in German it's affe. The second change was that the final T at the end of a word became a S or Z sound. To illustrate this, let's look at the word white. In Dutch it's wit and in German it's weiss. The third change was when the letter K was replaced with a CH sound. Take for example the word belly. In Dutch it's buik and in German bauch. The second phase saw two changes. The first one being where the P sound became a F sound. The word horse illustrates this point perfectly. In Dutch it's paard and in German it's pferd. The second change was with the letter T when it's not at the end of a word. It became a Z or Z sound. For example the word tooth. In Dutch it's tand and in German it's zahn. In the southern Austro-Bavarian dialects a third shift happened, but this one is not found in standard German, so that's a topic for another time. The third phase saw only one shift that affected standard German. The de 
sound at the beginning of a word became a t sound. Look at the word part. In Dutch, it's deel, and in German, it's teil. Two other shifts happened, but they were restricted to Swiss German and some Austro Bavarian dialects. Let's keep moving. Whether the fourth phase is officially part of the high German consonant shift is a debate, as one part also affected Low German and Dutch. This is the opposite of the first three phases, which solely affected High German. The three shifts include the th becomes a d. This shift also happens in Dutch and not in English. So bath in Dutch is bad and in German it's bad. The last three shifts happen somewhere sometime along or after the high German consonant shift. The first one is like the other shifts mentioned before. The other two only concern the pronunciation of letters. The first one is that the th or v sound becomes a b sound. This can be seen in the word love. In Dutch it's liefde and in German it's liebe. The second shift, purely in pronunciation, is the G sound. In High German, they used to pronounce the G as in Dutch. The signature G sound. As Dutch was unaffected by this change, we still pronounce the words in the good old way. Take for example the verb to give. In Dutch we say geven and in German it's geben. The last one is that the S and the Z are pronounced as SH. Take for example the word weak. In Dutch it's zwak and in German it's schwach. The last one does get a bit vague as in Dutch we also know the SH sound. Take for example the word shield. In Dutch it's schild and in German it's schild. As I mentioned before, these changes started right from around the fall of the West Roman Empire and continued until somewhere in the 9th century, as then German was written down in books. This caused a degree of standardization of Old High German, which later became the Standard German. And that wraps up the phases. Having this shift in mind, you can see why German and Dutch are over 80% similar. Don't think that every word is similar though. There are a lot of false friends. The word winkel is such a false friend. If I say in Dutch, ik ga naar de winkel, I say, I am going to the store. If I were to literally translate that in German, it's something along the lines of Ich gehe zum Winkel. That will leave the average German puzzled. That is because in German, Winkel means angle. And if you're saying you're going to the angle, that probably would raise some questions. So, you may be wondering what the other differences are. Because of the high German consonant shift, a lot of words are spelled differently. This is not where it stops, however, because German and Dutch spelling rules continue to differ on various other aspects. Here are three examples where spelling rules differ. The first one, the spelling rules for capital letters. Generally speaking, Dutch follow the same spelling rules as English, with the exception of months and days of the week. They're not capitalized in Dutch. German, on the other hand, capitalizes each and every noun. A second one is that in Dutch, non loan words never end with a double letter. For example, the verb to want in German is spelled as W I L L, while in Dutch it's spelled as W I L only one L. The third one is about plurals. Plurals are easy in Dutch. 
They either end in EN or with a S. In German, it's just a bit harder to grasp as nouns are declined in various different endings and the rules are harder to learn. Having three genders does not make it any easier. Does that mean that spelling rules in Dutch are way easier? Sadly, it does not. It is sometimes joked that Dutch spelling rules have an exception to the exception of the exception of the exception of the main rule. This partly has to do with the Taaluni. This is an organization created by the Dutch and Belgium government to govern the spelling of the Dutch language. In the Netherlands, the Taaluni is the only organization that can change the official spelling rules that is used by the government and is taught in schools. This high degree of standardization means that sometimes awkward spelling of words remain in place for a very long time. Before we move on with differences in grammar, I'll mention a funny thing both languages have in common. Nouns are written together, no spaces. This leads to monster words in Dutch like Kindercarnavalsoptochtvoorbereiding werkzaamheden, comitéleden. That's one Dutch word for children's carnival parade preparation committee members. Or in German, they have the word Rindfleischetakierungsüberwachungsaufgabenübertragungsgesetz. That's the German word for a law to delegate monitoring of veal labeling. Just as a side note, you won't find these words in a dictionary as no one normally uses this word. They remain grammatically correct though. That being said, let's move on to grammar. When it concerns articles, Dutch only has two genders. This is still harder than the English with their the, but still much easier than the many different ones German have. There's also one indefinite article, which is easy to remember. In Dutch, it's een. The negative indefinite article is always geen, always. The first gender is the common gender, either masculine or feminine. This group is known as de nouns. For example, de boom. This means the tree. As trees have the masculine gender in Dutch, it's a de noun. The second gender is neuter, known as het nouns. For example, het huis. This means the house. As houses have the neuter gender in Dutch, it is a het noun. There's one exception to nouns not having three genders. This is when referring back to nouns using the possessive. Then gender does play a role. I'll illustrate that with the following example. De raad beslist. Haar beslissing werd goed ontvangen. This literally translates to the council decides. Her decision was well received. Because Dutch only knows two genders, this means that Dutch has no cases. It's always de or het. Even with plural, we simply use de for that. No more der, die, oder, das. Prepositions don't change a single thing. This does make life easier, as Germans sometimes don't even agree amongst themselves what gender should be assigned to a specific word. Take the word butter as an example. The southern Bundesländer and much of Switzerland and part of Austria say butter is masculine. The rest of the German speaking population use it as a feminine word. As Dutch and German have the same ancestor language, this means that Dutch used to have cases so one can sometimes pop up in old expressions or names. 
For example, the official name for the Netherlands in Dutch is Koninkrijk der Nederlanden. Translates to Kingdom of the Netherlands. Leaving gender and case behind us, let's talk about another grammatical point. Word order. The basic word order for Dutch and German and a bunch of other languages is subject, verb, object. In Dutch and German, however, we have something peculiar going on. And this is known as the subject, verb, object, verb order in more complex sentences. This is also known as the V2 word order. Let me illustrate this with an example. I am going to learn something about the differences between Dutch and German today. In Dutch that would be Ik ga vandaag wat over de verschillen tussen Nederlands en Duits leren. In German it would be Heute werde ich etwas über den Unterschied zwischen Niederländisch und Deutsch lernen. Those are very long sentences, so I'll break them down to make it easier to understand. In English, all the verbs are at the beginning of the sentence. I am going to learn dot dot dot. In Dutch and German, only the conjugated word gaan in Dutch or werden in German is at the beginning of the sentence. The infinitive leren in Dutch or lernen in German is the, at the end of the sentence. This is something typical of Dutch and German. The exact word order of the V2 position is slightly different between Dutch and German. When it comes to auxiliary verbs, the order in Dutch is Auxiliary verb plus infinitive. In German, it's the opposite way around. Infinitive plus auxiliary verb. I will illustrate this with an example. This is a television series that one should definitely watch. In Dutch, dit is een televisieserie die men beslist zou moeten kijken. And in German, das is eine TV-serie die man unbedingt anschauen sollte. Note again how in Dutch the correct sentence is moeten kijken and in German it is anschauen sollte. Listen to the dialogue. Wat doe je voor werk? Ik ben een kunstenaar. Listen to it again, now with the English translation. Wat doe je voor werk? What do you do? Ik ben een kunstenaar. I'm an artist. First of all, you need to learn how to say, What do you do? That's... Wat doe je voor werk? Listen to it again. Wat doe je voor werk? Wat doe je voor werk? Now. How do you answer this question? This is the pattern you'll need. Ik ben een... Your occupation. I'm a... An... Your occupation. For example, I'm an artist. Ik ben een kunstenaar. Ik ben een kunstenaar. Here are a few more professions you can use with the same pattern. Police officer. Politieagent. Politieagent. Politieagente. Politieagente. Teacher. Leraar. Leraar. Lerares. Lerares. Doctor. 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 Engineer. Ingenieur. Ingenieur. Now, listen to some examples. 
Wat doe je voor werk? Ik ben een leraar. Wat doe je voor werk? Ik ben een dokter. Wat doe je voor werk? Ik ben een ingenieur. Oké, okay, now it's your turn. Do you remember how to say, what do you do? Wat doe je voor werk? Imagine you're a doctor. Do you remember how to say, doctor? Dokter. Dokter. Say, I'm a doctor. Ik ben een dokter. Now answer the question saying that you are a doctor. Wat doe je voor werk? Ik ben een dokter. Now, imagine you're a teacher. Do you remember how to say teacher? Leraar. Leraar. Say, I'm a teacher. Ik ben een leraar. Now, answer the question saying that you are a teacher. Wat doe je voor werk? Ik ben een leraar. Now, imagine you're an engineer. Do you remember how to say engineer? Ingenieur. Ingenieur. Say, I'm an engineer. Ik ben een ingenieur. Now, answer the question saying that you are an engineer. Wat doe je voor werk? Ik ben een ingenieur. Een leraar is aan het praten met zijn leerlingen. Wat gaan de leerlingen meenemen? Morgen gaan we naar het museum. Neem met je mee een pen, een schrift en iets om te drinken. Je hoeft geen boterhammen mee te nemen, want we gaan lunchen in het restaurant van het museum. En een paraplu? Het kan gaan regenen. Neem er alsjeblieft eentje mee. Oké. Okay. Wat gaan de leerlingen meenemen? Een leraar is aan het praten met zijn leerlingen. Wat gaan de leerlingen meenemen? Morgen gaan we naar het museum. Neem met je mee een pen, een schrift en iets om te drinken. Je hoeft geen boterhammen mee te nemen, want we gaan lunchen in het restaurant van het museum. En een paraplu? Het kan gaan regenen. Neem er alsjeblieft eentje mee. Oké. Okay. Een man en een vrouw zijn aan het praten. Wanneer nemen ze een massage? Een vriend van me heeft net een nieuwe massagesalon geopend. Een massagesalon? Daar wil ik heen. Heb je zaterdag tijd? Zaterdag heb ik het druk. Hoe denk je over zondag? De zaak is op zondag dicht. En vrijdag? Oké. Okay. Wanneer nemen ze een massage? Een man en een vrouw zijn aan het praten. Wanneer nemen ze een massage? Een vriend van me heeft net een nieuwe massagesalon geopend. Een massagesalon? Daar wil ik heen. Heb je zaterdag tijd? Zaterdag heb ik het druk. 
Hoe denk je over zondag? De zaak is op zondag dicht. En vrijdag? Oké. Okay. Een vrouw is aan het praten met een winkelbediende. Naar welke verdieping gaat de vrouw? Excuseer, waar bevindt zich de kleding voor vrouwen? Op de derde, vierde en vijfde verdieping. Op welke hangen de jassen? Op de vierde verdieping. De lift bevindt zich daar ginds. Op de vierde verdieping? Dank u wel. Naar welke verdieping gaat de vrouw? Een vrouw is aan het praten met een winkelbediende. Naar welke verdieping gaat de vrouw? Excuseer, waar bevindt zich de kleding voor vrouwen? Op de derde, vierde en vijfde verdieping. Op welke hangen de jassen? Op de vierde verdieping. De lift bevindt zich daar ginds. Op de vierde verdieping? Dank u wel. Een man en een vrouw zijn aan het praten. Waar is de sleutel? Waar is de sleutel van het appartement? Ik heb hem op de tafel achtergelaten. Hij ligt er niet. Probeer eens onder de tafel. Niets. Hmm, hij zit ook niet in mijn zak. Oh, hij zat in mijn tas. Waar is de sleutel? Een man en een vrouw zijn aan het praten. Waar is de sleutel? Waar is de sleutel van het appartement? Ik heb hem op de tafel achtergelaten. Hij ligt er niet. Probeer eens onder de tafel. Niets. Hmm, hij zit ook niet in mijn zak. Oh, hij zat in mijn tas. Een man en een vrouw zijn aan het praten. Wanneer gaat de man schilderen? Schilder je elke dag? Ja, vanaf negen uur s morgens tot zeven uur s avonds. Van negen tot zeven? Dat is tien uur. Ja, inderdaad. Het is mijn werk. Wanneer gaat de man schilderen? Een man en een vrouw zijn aan het praten. Wanneer gaat de man schilderen? Schilder je elke dag? Ja, vanaf negen uur s morgens tot zeven uur s avonds. Van negen tot zeven? Dat is tien uur. Ja, inderdaad. Het is mijn werk. Your condition is not getting better, and you decide to go to the nearby clinic. You receive a medical report. What is the diagnosis? You receive a medical report. What is the diagnosis? The diagnosis is Food poisoning caused by contaminated food.
Voedselvergiftiging veroorzaakt door besmet voedsel. You just bought a few items from a local shop online. What information does the website say about the delivery date? What information does the website say about the delivery date? The website says that Delivery dates differ depending on the delivery method, but all dates should be calculated from the next working day. Leveringsdata verschillen afhankelijk van de verzendmethode, maar alle data moeten worden berekend vanaf de volgende werkdag. The day after ordering an item online, you receive an email notification. How can you track your package? How can you track your package? The email says that you can track your package on this website by logging into your account, and after logging in, click on your order history and enter the order number found in this email. U kunt uw pakket traceren door in te loggen met uw gegevens op deze website. Na het inloggen, klik op uw bestelgeschiedenis en toets het bestelnummer in wat u in deze e-mail vindt. You're reading the instructions of an electronic device you've just bought. What should you do in case of overheating?
What should you do in case of overheating? The manual says that if you notice the surface overheating, unplug the device immediately and allow it to cool down before handling again. Als u merkt dat de oppervlakte over verhit raakt, ontkoppel het apparaat onmiddellijk en laat het eerst afkoelen alvorens weer te gebruiken. Your reading and event guide and are going to see an upcoming art event. What does the guide say about bringing food to the event? What does the guide say about bringing food to the event? The description reads that if you bring your own food or drinks, they will be confiscated. Zelf meegebrachte consumpties worden in beslag genomen. With your receipt, you also received a coupon. Where do you have to present the coupon? Where do you have to present the coupon? It says, present this coupon at the counter at the time of purchase to receive a 20% discount off all items. Laat deze kortingsbon tijdens de aankoop aan de balie zien en ontvang 20% korting op alle artikelen. Want to speed up your language learning? Take your very first lesson with us. You'll start speaking in minutes and master real conversations. Sign up for your free lifetime account. Just click the link in the description.